One second. That's this long. But how did we decide that? Well, a second used to be one eighty-six thousand four hundredth of a day, the time between noon one day and noon the next. That sounds strange, but it's just because there are twenty-four hours in one day, sixty minutes in an hour, and sixty seconds in a minute. But days vary a little bit as the Earth wobbles, and scientists want a consistent measure of time, which humans have defined. So the second was redefined. Yet we do that to be something constant. The second is the duration of nine billion a hundred and ninety-two million six hundred and thirty-one thousand seven hundred and seventy periods of the radiation, corresponding to the transition between the two hyperfine levels of the ground state of the cesium one three three atom. With the right equipment, this can be measured anywhere, and it is. Clocks that keep track of time this way are called atomic clocks. They can be accurate up to one second off in fifteen billion years. That's cool. I can tell you how long this video is, but how far away are you from the screen as you watch it? For this, we need a measure of distance, and we use the meter. Again, the definition has changed since it was first thought up. We used to use the size of the Earth. A meter was one ten millionth the distance between the equator and the North Pole. That's very nice, but it's a little tricky to measure. So they decided to make a prototype meter bar, then change it, then put it on rollers. And then they defined the meter on the wavelength of Krypton 86's orange line in the emission spectrum. Then they decided this wasn't good enough, so they redefined it as the length of the path travelled by light in a vacuum during a time interval of one two hundred ninety-nine million seven hundred ninety-two thousand four hundred fifty-eighth of a second. This means light travels two hundred ninety-nine million seven hundred ninety-two thousand four hundred fifty-eight meters in one second. Light is fast. Cool. We can measure the distance of things and the times things take. Now we need to measure mass, and for that we use the kilogram. The kilogram? Surely the unit is the gram. Well, no. To cut a long story short, people were being decapitated, a name sounded too posh, and a unit was too small. So we have the kilogram as the SI unit. The kilogram was the mass of one decimeter of water at four degrees Celsius at sea level. But water is sloshy, pressure is not constant, and sea levels vary. So they made a hunk of metal with exactly the same mass, put it in a bell jar, in a bell jar, and said, "This is the kilogram." To this day, we still have a 137-year-old lump of platinum slowly changing weight in a box in a basement in Paris, and we say it is the kilogram. Understandably, this makes scientists unhappy, so they are hoping to redefine it based on the Avogadro constant or the Planck constant. So, having defined three of the seven SI units, what can we do? Let's derive some units. A meter per second is speed, and speed per second is acceleration. The force required to accelerate one kilogram by one meter per second per second is a newton, and the force of a newton applied over a meter is energy, a joule. We also have a joule absorbed per kilogram, which is a gray for dosage of ionizing radiation. If we use a joule per second, that's a watt, a measure of power. And finally, a force applied to an area is pressure. That's about as far as we can go with the first three units. If you want to find out about these four units, don't forget to subscribe.